Hi, today we'll be uh, unboxing and taking a first look at Broadway Limited's Santa Fe Blue Goose steam engine. Uh, this particular one is a 1941 appearance. Um, I just think these are awesome engines. They're really monster Hudsons, some of the biggest that were ever built. Probably rivaled only by uh, Milwaukee Roads F7s and the Chicago Northwestern E4 classes. So it comes in the uh, this cardboard sleeve, and inside the sleeve, uh, you can see the plastic packaging and the engine inside. Um, there's also uh, a little sleeve in the back with the manual, I assume. There's the operator's manual. Put that there, and we'll take the engine out of the out of the box. So also inside, we have a funnel for smoke fluid, and I see a couple bags of detail parts. Um, tool for removing drivers and a couple spare traction tires. And this de detail part, I'm not quite sure what it is. We'll have to figure out where that goes. The packaging is pretty typical of some of the more recent Broadway Limited engines. Um, I've had a few Broadway Limiteds, uh, but this is my first brass hybrid from them. So I'm excited to see what it looks like. So I took the plastic sleeve off, and then these sides come off of the packaging. And we're ready to take the engine out. So I've cleared some space on the table so we can open the, the final layer of packaging. Uh, this is pretty standard packaging for Broadway Limited engines. Uh, looks like the engine and the tender are uh, permanently coupled together. They lift out like this. So there's the uh, drawbar with the uh, wire harness going between them. I can tell just by picking up the engine that um, it is brass construction. You can feel that it's made of metal. Um, so these brass hybrids have a brass uh, body, uh, but a die cast metal chassis. And let's get it on the track and look at some of the details. We can start by looking at some details on the, the front of the engine. I think overall the contour of the nose and the, the streamlined casing is spot on. It looks uh, exactly like prototype pictures. The Santa Fe Herald in front is a is a separately applied piece, maybe an etching, um, and the chrome striping on the pilot is also very nicely done. So the engine doesn't have a front coupler and it looks like there's no provision uh, for one. So uh, this model will always basically have the pilot doors closed. Uh, there's marker lights on either side of the front grille. It looks like they have jewels in them, so they don't light up. Um, but the jewels look really nice, they're bright. The grille on the front of the stack is, in my view, a little bit heavy. Um, if you look at prototype pictures, the grille is, uh, it almost looks like wire. It's kind of very airy and see-through. Uh, but this looks like it's a casting that has some flash um, still stuck to the back of it. So it's not as see-through. I think uh, they could have done a better job at that. Um, uh, moving down the boiler, you can see the whistle mounted here beside the smokestack, uh, painted a brass color with the whistle rod kind of extending through the, the skyline casing. Uh, the smokestack has a Santa Fe style uh, stack extension um, in the extended position. I've had other BLI engines where the, the smokestack is replaceable. So it can either be modeled, uh, raised or lowered, but this model, it appears that the smokestack is permanently mounted uh, in the raised position. You also see the throttle linkage here uh, coming out, out of the casing and then to the, the front end throttle right here by the smoke, the smoke box. Uh, num number boards look really sharp. 
uh, with 3460 printed on them. Uh, looking at the running gear, I think that BLI did a really good job with these chrome cylinder covers. Um, they look really good. Uh, the rods are, they look like they're chrome plated, so they're, they're really shiny, maybe a little bit too shiny for my taste, but I think that, that BLI is um, really trying to make this a showpiece model. Um, so it, it definitely looks good for display. I may try to tone that down with some weathering though. Um, this engine has 84 inch drive wheels, so they're really uh, large driving wheels and I think BLI models them really well. The uh, box pock driver centers are really well detailed. You get the, um, the pattern of the holes uh, and the ribs uh, are all there. I also like the, the linkage here to the mechanical lubricator coming off of, uh, coming off of the uh, valve gear. I don't think it moves with the valve gear, uh, but it's a nice touch nevertheless. Builder's plate is printed on the smoke box right here. It is legible. Um, it would have been nice if it was uh, a separately applied uh, etching, kind of like the Herald on the front of the, the locomotive. It looks like it's, it's just printed on the, the blue paint. Uh, so I think that could have been done a little bit nicer, especially for a, a model that is uh, you know, this expensive. Uh, moving down the model, the the rear truck has separately apl applied brake cylinders and brake rigging. Um, there's also uh, some piping for the injectors running along the bottom of the smoke box and the um, automatic reverser cylinder is modeled here as well. Uh, since this is a streamlined engine, most of the uh, appliances are under the, the, the casing, but you still have uh, some good details coming off the turret here. Uh, this little box with the grill is where the automatic train stop box is and if, if you look in from the top you can actually see it in there so that's a nice touch. I think the cab has uh, really nice uh, aluminum trim on the windows. There's glazing in this front window and this, this back window is open and there, there are crew figures inside the cab. I also wanted to show some of the details on the, the roof of the locomotive. Uh, so like we said, the stack is in an extended position here. Uh, there's hatches for the, sand, the sandbox. Uh, the safety valves are painted a gold color uh, and the, the uh, automatic train stop box is visible um, under this area here. Uh, I assume that this grill over here is for the steam generator. Uh, there's also cab hatches modeled, uh, they don't open, looks like. Nope. Here are the details on the top of the tender. Uh, it's an oiled fired engine, so uh, you have hatches for the oil bunker modeled right here, um, hatches for the water tank, um, handrails, and a backup light painted silver. I think that the, the paint job on this engine is superb. Uh, the paint is is all smooth and especially this aluminum stripe is very sharp uh, and the black pin striping as well so BLI did a very good job with that. I think flipping the engine around to see the other side I uh, wanted to show the back of the tender so there's a an emergency light here it looks like it's got a red lens in it so we'll take a look at that when we power it up. Uh, they've got uh, the air brake hoses and also the uh, steam uh, hose for the passenger car is modeled as well. Um, this is a passenger engine after all. Here's a quick look at the fireman's side of the engine. Uh, so a lot of the same uh, level of detail as the engineer's side. Uh, most of the appliances are hidden under the, the, the streamlined casing. Uh, you, you can see some of the air pump right here tucked away on the pilot deck. I think that's a nice touch uh, since it's a detail that you really uh, don't see very well, but it's modeled anyway. So BLI did go through the trouble of putting it in there. Um, one thing to mention, 
pet peeve of mine on BLI engines is that the axle centers on the drive wheels and on the pilot wheels uh, are always unpainted. And on a normal steam engine, that's where everything's black, it's not too hard to touch up. But on this engine, it's going to be next to impossible to match that shade of, of darker blue to make everything look uniform. So I might have to just tone that down with some weathering. Um, but I really wish that, that BLI would paint the whole driver or the whole wheel face. All right, now we're ready to power it on for the first time. I'm using a uh, NC power cab DCC system. So selecting local number three. Headlight. Whistle. Bell. So I haven't added any smoke fluid to it yet, um, but you can see the smoke unit starts right up. And let's try it in speed step one. Two. So it runs very smoothly. Um, I see the number boards are also lit up too, which is a nice touch, these right here. Uh, the sound is better than I expected for a Paragon 4. Um, I've, had, I've had my complaints about other Broadway Limited sound systems, uh, but I'm impressed with this one so far. Um, here's the engine running at speed step 10, just to show the smoothness at, at this speed range and speed step 20 Another feature I wanted to point out is the uh, cab light. So there's a cab or a light inside the cab that turns on when the engine is idling and it turns off automatically uh, when the engine starts to move forward or backwards. There's also a light right here behind the cab roof that comes on whenever the headlight is, is turned on. And it stays on whether the engine is in forward or reverse, as long as the headlight's on. One thing that is a bit of a disappointment is I can't figure out um, how to turn this light on, so it may not um, be operational at all. I thought it might come on when the engine was in reverse, but it looks like only this light at the back of the cab turns on.
This engine comes with Broadway Limited's GoPack capacitors pre-installed. Um, so on my layout, I can cut off track power using the switch and we'll test it to see how long the engine still runs after power has been cut off to it. So here goes. That was about three to four seconds. So that should be enough to uh, for the engine to make it over um, small dead spots or, or switch frogs that might be unpowered. I did notice that the light turns off when power is cut out. So uh, every time the engine loses power, even though the capacitors are keeping it moving, uh, the light's gonna go out. And I've noticed that that happens all the time. Even um, just running on the track, the light will flicker on and off. So uh, pickup seems to be a bit of an issue with this engine. Um, I'm a little disappointed uh, that the capacitors don't keep the lights on. Uh, other manufacturers have this figured out. Uh, Tsunami or WOW sound decoders don't, um, don't cut out power to the headlight when their capacitors uh, pick up the power. So I'm disappointed that Broadway Limited's decoder uh, has that uh, kind of uh, flaw in it. So I happen to have a model of an unstreamlined version of uh, this 3460 class Hudson in my collection. Uh, this is a brass import by Westside. Uh, I thought it'd be fun to compare it to the Blue Goose just to show kind of what's under the hood, so to speak. Uh, you can see some details are in the same spots like dynamo here and here, uh, automatic train stop box here and here. Um, well, other details like the whistle, which is mounted right here by the sandbox on the unstreamlined version, uh, but on the blue goose, it had to be moved forward uh, by the stack. Um, I think it's just an interesting comparison and in, uh, how this two versions of the same class of steam locomotive look. I think the uh, BLI model stacks up very well against the, the brass import. Uh, it has a comparable level of detail and definitely better electronics. So I, I'm pretty impressed. The Santa Fe 3460 class Hudsons were some of the largest ever built. Um, probably their they're only comparable engines um, on other railroads were the Milwaukee Road F7s and the Chicago Northwestern E4s, which uh, were also streamlined like the Blue Goose. Uh, but I thought it would be, it'd be fun to show how the Blue Goose compares to some of the other Hudsons in my collection. Uh, I've lined them up with the tenders um, all at the same point, and you can see uh, the length difference between them all. This is a Wabash P1, a Seabean QS4, the unstreamlined 3460 class, and then, of course, number 3460, the Blue Goose. The other three models that I have here are all brass imports of various vintages. And I think uh, the brass hybrid BLI models uh, stands up really well against them. Um, the detail is outstanding. And when you throw in the fact that the BLI model has all the electronics built into it, uh, it's, uh, it's a really good package. I think BLI picked a good prototype uh, to do with the Blue Goose, because um, that's a locomotive that prior to this offering, you could really only get as a pretty crude uh, brass model from uh, Tenshoto uh, or the River Rossi uh, kind of faux blue goose where they, they took a, a blue goose shaped shell and threw it on their, their New York Central chassis. Um, or you'd have to pay you know three times as much as you're going to pay for a BLI engine to get a, a Hallmark brass model. Um, and while the, the river, while the BLI model might not be as as nice as that Hallmark model, it's pretty darn close. So um, I, I think BLI did a, a really good job bringing this engine to market. Uh, I did figure out how to turn on the emergency light on the back of the tender. Uh, it's function 20, and the headlight also has to be on for the backup light to come on. Um, so if I first turn the headlight on, you'll see that 
the light in the back of the cab come on, indicating that that and the headlight is on. And then I hit function 20. And there's the, the emergency red light. And if I turn the headlight off, all the lights turn off. Turning the headlight back on while keeping function 20 on. And the emergency light is off, so you have to basically re-initialize function 20. And that emergency light just stays on even when the engine is moving and no matter what direction the engine is moving in. It's kind of a weird control though. Um, function 20 in the manual is actually labeled as a, a industrial sound effect, and there's no mention in the manual about how to operate that, that uh, red light. So you really just have to find it by experimenting. Um, I really wish Barlow Limited would uh, put that in the documentation. It's also kind of a weird combination of functions to, to, to have to turn on to use it. Uh, either it should be totally independent or um, they could just tie it into the headlight and make it come on automatically when the engine goes in reverse. I think that would be a better setup than kind of a mystery function that, that they've got it assigned to now. Um, this is also a good time to kind of go on a little rant about the lighting on this engine. It is cool that it has uh, the emergency light, the light on the back of the cab, the cab light, the lighted number boards, as well as the headlight. But really only, or none of these lights are, are independently controllable. So if you turn the headlight on, the number board lights and this light on the back of the cab turn on at the same time. The cab light is only on when the engine is, is, in, uh, is standing still. When the engine starts moving, it automatically turns off no matter what. And as we just saw, the, the red light on the back of the tender has to be used in, conjun in conjunction with having the headlight on. Um, it just kind of makes for a, a weird combination of functions that are that are necessary to run this engine. It's it's either you have you know practically all the lights on at the same time or, or nothing. Uh, I think that for a premium engine that you're paying a premium price for, these should all be independently controlled functions. And I'll have to look and see if I can map that um, using the CVs so that I can control these lights independently. Uh, but I'm disappointed that they don't come that way from the factory. I did finally figure out what that one mystery detail piece is. Um, it's actually the uh, speed recorder for the automatic train system and it mounts right here on the front truck. I suspect that mounting it might affect the uh, minimum radius of the engine and that's why BLI left it as a separate detail piece but I'll have to experiment to see if it'll run on my layout. Overall I have to say I'm very impressed with uh, BLI's Blue Goose I, I came into this expecting it to have great detail and expecting it to have uh, a smooth mechanism based off of other VLA engines that I've owned. Um, but I was really impressed with the, the sound system. I think it's the Paragon 4 system is improved over the Paragon 2 and 3 engines that I have. Um, a couple of issues that I have with this engine are that um, all the lights turn on and off together. So the headlight, the number board lights, and the light on the back of the cab all turn on with function zero. And I think for uh, this kind of premium engine, uh, it would have been nice to have independent control of those lights. Um, also, the uh, uh, axle centers on the drivers are, are unpainted, and, and it's going to be really hard to match that blue color if, um, if you want to touch those up and make the drivers um, solid. But overall, it's a, a great engine for um, the price that you're going to pay for it because the, uh, any, any comparable model um, is going to be uh, two, or two to three times more if you're looking for it, a, uh, a brass import. The Santa Fe never actually had any blue painted passenger cars. 
Uh, so the Blue Goose spent its career pulling Pullman Green and Stainless Steel consists. Uh, so I put together a uh, nice little heavyweight train and we'll conclude with some shots of it running around the layout. Thanks for watching and uh, please like and subscribe.